is of his existence when he first obeyed God. Now you're really afraid to answer, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Abraham knew the purpose of his move when he first settled in the land of Palestine? Do you think Abraham knew his purpose when he first began to prepare to serve the Lord? You know what? I think so. Now, he didn't understand every little intricate detail of it. But he knew what he was supposed to do. He knew his purpose. Why? Because he obeyed. And uh, let's stop right there for just a moment. Look at Genesis chapter 12. And let's see the purpose of Abraham's life. Look at verse number 2. We're going to look at the complete purpose of Abraham's life. It was more than just being the father of a great nation, even though that was the first one. His first purpose was to be the father of a great nation. But did God tell him, I will make you a great nation? Yeah. By the way, and I'm not going to do this for all of them, but I could. All of these things that God created Abraham to uh, purpose in his life, God has created us for the same thing. Do you know that God expects us to be a great nation? Why? Because... 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So part of Abraham's purpose in life was to be a great nation. And we can say the same thing for ourselves. God has called us to be a holy nation. But not only did God make him a great nation. Number two, he told him, your second person, purpose, Abraham, is I will bless you. I will bless you. Another purpose for us. In Jeremiah 29, <coughs> verse 11, God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Well, I tell you, there's a lot of Christians out there that go through what I call the Eeyore complex. They always got a cloud hanging over their head and think God's against them. Hey, you know what? Jeremiah tells us right here that God says, I am not against you. I have plans for you, and my plans are to prosper you, not to harm you. But there's a key to this purpose. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But the third purpose that God called Abraham was I will make your name great. I will make your name great. And in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1, Solomon says a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. So there's something about having a great name. And the fourth purpose that God called Abraham to, He said, Abraham, you will be a blessing. And all of these, these first four that we've looked at so far, they're all in just verse 2. We haven't even got to verse 3 yet. So God said, Abraham, your purpose in life is this. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And you will be a blessing. And number five, he says, I'm going to bless those who bless you. That's your purpose, Abraham. I'm going to bless those who bless you. And number six, I'm going to curse those who curse you. <coughs> and then finally, number seven, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Abraham, that's your purpose. Your purpose is that you are going to be a blessing 
to everyone else. Do you realize today that we are blessed today because Abraham was blessed? It's through the line of Abraham that our Messiah comes. <clears throat> Wouldn't you think that's a blessing? So, real quick, seven of them. Now, if I were to come to you and say the purpose of Abraham's life was for him to have a great name, is that true or false? True. True. Now, is that the only purpose of Abraham's life? No. No. Why? Because God said Abraham in verses 2 and 3 of Genesis chapter 12, he says, Abraham, look, you need to move. You need to get away from your family. You need to take your wife, and you can even take your nephew if you want to. But I want you to move to a place that I will tell you about later. Right now, I just want you to move. Because I have a purpose for your life, Abraham, and it's not going to be fulfilled where you are. Well, God, what is my purpose? I'm glad you asked, Abraham. Here it is. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. You're going to be a blessing to others. And I'm going to bless those who bless you. And Abraham, I'm going to curse those who curse you. And all the families of the earth are going to be blessed because of you, Abraham. That's your purpose in life. So how did Abraham fulfill his purpose? Here's the key to it all. You ready for this? <coughs> Look at verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. So what did Abraham do? Somebody tell me one word to explain what Abraham did. He... Obeyed. Oh, wow. Everybody. Woo! <laughs> Obey. Yeah. He obeyed. How did Abraham fulfill God's purpose in his life? He obeyed. obeyed. Now, was Abraham perfect? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Did Abraham make some mistakes? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. We already talked about one of them. When he went to Egypt, you all remember the story? When he went to Egypt and he was afraid for his life, so he told Sarah... He said, let's tell everybody that you are my sister instead of my wife in case they want to take you and they'll kill me to take you away. Do you realize Abraham didn't do that just once? He did it twice. So you think he made a few mistakes along the way? Yes. Yes, he did. But overall, how did Abraham fulfill his purpose? He obeyed God. He obeyed God. God. So now let's bring this home. What is your purpose in life? Now some of you are looking, I can see the wheels turning. And some of you are saying, I have no clue. Now you could say this. Well, my purpose in life is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and that wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> but it's incomplete. So let me ask you another question. How are you glorifying God and enjoying Him? If that is our purpose in life, that's why God has created it. Is that, if that is the chief end of man, how are we doing that? What's that, Joel? By obeying Him. Obedience. That's the key. But where does that apply? Everywhere. At home. At work. At school. I know. Everywhere. While you're driving your car and the speed limit says 75. 